Further debate, the member for Temiskaming Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. It's uh, it's always an honor to stand up in this house. It's uh, I wouldn't say it's a pleasure to stand up for a time allocation motion. And this one, I'd, I'd like to talk about a couple things today. And the first, the first is, it's a contradiction to talk about or to want to time allocate a bill on transparency. So basically, you're saying we want to let you talk about it, but not very long. So. And really, if you're working on a bill about transparency, and if you're really truly a government committed to openness and transparency, you would want to get as much on the table as opposed to as little on the table as possible. So it's a contradiction. And I'd like to follow up something that, that uh, my house leader said about and I, I don't have the institutional memory of this place that some of the other people do because I've only been here three years. But some of the things he said about, because, about committee work. Committee work's very important, but getting committees out in the province is, I think, even more important. And this bill, again, it restricts the committees to here. An insular <laughs> vacuum of, instead of this province, an insular vacuum of one specific spot in the province. And in my three years here, I've only had the opportunity to be on one, I got subbed in on one committee. And it was the Lynn Review, and I've mentioned it here before. And we went, one of the places we went was uh, Kingston, and we went to Van Cleek Hill, the people in Van Cleek Hill are probably still talking about that. <laughs> but, but not only did, in that short time that I was subbed in, not only did I build relationships that I wouldn't have had before, I also understood parts about the province that I never would have gotten the opportunity we, unless we'd have been on that trip. And by this continuous time allocation and saying, well, we only oh, we have committee, we have committee presentations, they have to be here, or we can do them by Skype, or we can do them on the telephone, because we don't have Skype really. A lot of where I'm from, a lot of us don't have high speed internet. So and I think really for this government, for any government to truly understand the province, a few committees should travel to places where they don't have high-speed internet it would make it would make a difference it would make it would make for a, for for me it would make it a lot it makes a lot of difference when I go to places I've never been mm -hmm. I have a much better appreciation of the issues that are happening in Toronto since I've lived part-time in Toronto for the last three years it's made a huge difference in my in my outlook in this province but by can by this government declaring they're open and transparent but we only want to talk to people who have the ability to get to Toronto. That's wrong. It's wrong-headed. And it's not a, it's not a sign or, or a, yeah, it's not a sign that you truly believe in openness and transparency, despite what the bill's title is. But we're still waiting for an open and transparent business case. And I, I'll give you an example in my writing. And I'm still waiting for this answer. And, and the Minister of uh, Infrastructure is working with me. I'll give him credit. He's working with me. And I'll give you my business case. The town of Kirkland Lake. It needs to build a new swimming pool. It has young families. They've come to work in the mines. They've got young kids. There's not a lot of other services in my media area. They need a new swimming pool. They applied to Infrastructure Ontario for a loan from the same Infrastructure Ontario that got, gave the Mars 200 and some million dollars loan. They applied for a loan for seven and a half million dollars. Okay? They were refused. Why? They were refused because in the last year, they ran a deficit. They ran a deficit of about half a million dollars. That's why they refused. 
my approach to the minister and my business case, they ran that deficit because the MPAC assessment on their two major employers was challenged and they were forced to pay back a half a million dollars from a faulty MPAC assessment to those employers. Further to my business case, the Minister of Finance in this House has acknowledged that there's problems with MPAC. They've done a study. They've asked for a full review of MPAC because there's been problems specifically in one resource towns like Kirkland Lake. There's my business case. I've asked the Minister of Infrastructure to look into that to see if we can change that decision because the town had no control over a faulty MPAC ruling that forced them to pay back half a million dollars and caused a deficit. There's my business case, open and transparent. I'm still waiting for the answer. That's a business case. And we're still waiting for the answer on Mars. And that's why we question whether the government is truly, is truly interested in accountability and transparency. Because if they were, they would travel, talk about what, what transparency means. Something else, and I've said this in this house before, and I'm likely going to say it again as long as people in Tamiskaming and Cochran feel fit to have me speak on their behalf. That this government, and maybe governments before, because I've only had experience with this one, is really good at picking the right title and then crunching a bunch of other things in there, but focusing on the title. So who wouldn't want more MPP accountability and transparency and more public sector accountability? Of course. Everybody wants that. And even the House, that is, House, the Liberal House leader in his opening remarks, he mentioned that my colleague, the member of Timmins, James Bay, that he had said that, yeah, he could, you know, we support some of the things in here, maybe most of the things. And, but that's the problem with an omnibus bill. You, know, you, you put a few good things and then you slip a few that aren't so good. That's right. But it's great, you can run around and say, look, we're, we're, we put this bill forward, we're all about accountability and transparency, and how could these people you know, want to delay this because it's all sunshine and rose petals, but it's not. And like the member from Timmins James Bay said, if we actually had the time and the will from the governing side, maybe we could put a few amendments that would make this bill a little bit less egregious <coughs> in the areas where it is egregious. Because there are areas in this bill that are not going to do what the people think. Because when I look at the title, and I don't find if I didn't follow politics that closely, I would think they're turning over a new leaf. You know, this, this is the promise. I believe I heard it in the financial statement today, in the financial, that if this bill was passed, it's one of these things that's going to, you know, turning over a new leaf to make the government much more. This is a whole new open and transparent government. And if it was, they wouldn't have to time allocate this bill. And they also, we wouldn't, the opposition wouldn't have to do things that are oppositional if the government <laughs> actually answered questions. <laughs> That's, you know, and sometimes, and I'll, again, I'll use, I'll use my Kirk and Lake case, I'm waiting for the answer. And if the answer is no, and here's the case, well, that's, I've done my job on behalf of my constituents. And I'm, I'm fully expect, and, I, and I've had good relations with the minister, I fully expect he'll give me an answer. But when we don't get an answer and we get, oh, but we've released 700 documents and we've released this and we released that, that's not really an answer. Flooding people with a bunch of information but actually not pointing out where the information came from, that'd be like, 
that'd be like when I went to school and the teacher asked me a question and I throw the textbook on the table. I said, teacher, it's in there somewhere. I know what I'm doing. That's what they're doing. They're throwing the textbook on the table. They're throwing the, the manual on the table. So there's your answer. We didn't ask for a thousand documents. We asked for an answer. And this bill is not helping with that process. And that's what I find most disappointing. Are there good things in this bill? Yes. But it's not getting at the root problem that we're having with this government and that we continue to have with the new Wynn government. They're failing at this point to answer basic, basic questions. And questions that wouldn't, if they answered the question, it wouldn't be a scandal if you answered the question. You develop scandals when you tried to hide things. And that's the problem. So it's been a pleasure to be able to express my views and advocate on behalf of the people of Kirkland Lake who really need a swimming pool. Thank you, Speaker. <laughs>